Hey everyone, it's Tori, also known as Girly Girl Style, and today is going to be a big video. It's going to be a long video, but it's going to be hopefully an enjoyable video if you like numbers and data, and maybe you're just nosy and you want to see what people can make on uh, social media and reselling. If that is the video you're looking for, then you're in the right place. So my name is Tori. If you're brand new here, I uh, do a lot of things. This channel started off as a journey <laughs> as a journey kind of log of running a small business and it's been almost four years now I still can't believe it uh, over the last year I have had a lot of new uh, um, you know followers that are really focused more on the sewing and making and crafting piece of things but I still have a lot of followers that are really interested in running a small business specifically around reselling so uh, the YouTube channels in a little bit of transition but I'm still gonna continue to give you the insights into numbers because whether you're here for reselling content or for um, you know for anything else I think that it's always important that we talk about money I think money is something that can be very empowering, especially, you know, for women, um, because it's not something that we talk about very often. So I will continue to make these videos throughout the next year. So yes, we will be continuing on in our reselling small business journey in 2022. So um, if you have not been to one, one of my TED Talks, if you haven't been to one of my videos, uh, you haven't been to one of my videos? I don't know where my brain is. The new year just started and I am like raring to go. Um, but if you haven't seen one of my videos like this, what I'm actually going to do is we're going to flip over here to my spreadsheet and I'm going to show you a few different things. We're going to start by looking at the December numbers and I'm going to show you everything, the gross amount that we made reselling, every um, fee and, uh, you know, subtraction coming out um, and then also the net amount. So I'm going to walk through all of those pieces. We'll also talk about average sell prices and cost of goods and we'll do that at the December level that's something I do monthly however because it's the end of the year I'm also going to compare 2020 and 2021 because those years were very similar in that we've been in a pandemic and things have kind of been um, running the same way it'll it'll be kind of like apples and apples but then we're gonna actually and I'm really excited about this I'm gonna show you uh, what our numbers look comparatively over the last four years I started the business in 2018 so if you're a numbers nerd like me it's kind of cool just to see the business um, progression what's changed where has the average sell price come from where is it now um, um, all those different things, how many items were, you know, were selling in 2018 and 19 versus 20 and 21. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, stick around and don't forget to subscribe for future content like this. Um, and then uh, hopefully you like the video and uh, let's just dive right in. All right, we're gonna just take a quick look here at the December 2021 um, tab of my spreadsheet um, or my, my document. I use numbers to keep track of everything and then I put it all in QuickBooks as well, but this is where I keep track on a regular basis. So this is what the December tab looks like. You'll see that all of the data is in here. These are all of the listings that sold for the reselling business as well as my amounts for Etsy. Now that gets a lot of, um, it gets a little confusing, it's a little overwhelming, so I actually break everything down into this sheet right here. Now, again, if you look at this, you're like, okay, there's a lot of color, there's a lot of numbers, what in the heck is going on? Uh, so this is going to be a monthly breakdown of uh, all of the numbers. So if you're just looking for a quick glance, you can screenshot this, I don't mind, we are totally transparent with everything we share. Um, because again, I think that it's important that we talk about numbers and not a lot of people are as forthcoming um, as others. So anyway, um, as we look at these numbers, I've actually, I'm gonna get down here to December. This will be easier to focus on. So we're not so distracted with everything else going on. We're gonna see that in December, our gross total, this top section right here, this is the reselling business. Now, again, to clarify for those of you that may be new, we have a reselling business. I started it in 2018. My husband, partner, best friend, Bill, actually has been running the reselling portion uh, primarily over the last year 
almost 100%. Um, he, I mean, he, he's been killing it. And we'll be able to see when we look at the numbers how great of a job he's doing. And the reason that's so important is when I started the business, I was very controlling. The, you know, he had a full-time job. He had, he didn't really want anything to do with reselling. He didn't thrift. Uh, I mean, he thrifted. He just didn't have a passion uh, for it. However, things have changed. The world has changed in the last four years, and this is what he does. He, for his full-time um, job, is running a small business. So it's really cool to see how his input has really impacted. And again, we'll we'll get into that as well. So having a partner really can make a huge improvement in your business, sometimes I guess. In my case, that is true. Looking at the gross numbers though, as we see the reselling total. So 191584, this actually was one of our highest months for the year. Uh, also, when I say that this is Bill's full-time, that he runs the business full-time, he doesn't do full-time work. We don't have to because we've set up the business to be so successful that we don't have to waste so much time and energy focusing on the daily nuances. Um, we also sell only on Poshmark. I do sell on Etsy. I sell handcrafted items there. Um, as we come into the new year, we always talk about this. You never know what's going to happen. Things may change, but I don't actually foresee that happening because we are able to reach our monthly goal with Poshmark alone. Um, and yes, the question that everyone has asked, and I have never talked about it, we hired a uh, Posher VA. Well, we didn't hire them, whatever you do. Um, we 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 got a service this year um, because we realized that our time is worth more than anything else. And so uh, you'll see that our numbers, or we see that our numbers actually started improving once we, um, you know, once we did that. So anyway, here we are. Gross totals, 1915.84. In Flower and Anchor, and Flower and Anchor, if you don't know, is our modern Poshmark closet. This is where we actually list the bulk of the, this is what Bill does. He does all of this. I don't do anything with this. I mean, sometimes I'll get in there and play around. Um, <laughs> what I typically do is Bill will come to me and say, did you list something in my closet? I'm like, oh. Yeah, kind of, um, because I was clearing out my vintage closet of anything modern, so I was just kind of listing it over there and removing it from mine, uh, but I really don't do much at all in our modern closet. So in this case, we had $1,300, which again, this is these are all gross numbers, but this is really good. The monthly goal that we recently discovered or recently um, we didn't discover it, what did we do? We recently talked to our financial advisor and found out what we needed to do. Monthly goal is to get to $1,000 net from the reselling business, and that is Bill's monthly goal. Uh, so that's super awesome, and that is what we continue to strive for. So $1,300 in gross does, um, it did turn out so that Bill did get there. So the last three months, great job meeting that monthly goal. Now the, um, Girly Girl Style Closet, that's where it all began. That is vintage. That is vintage or some of my handcrafted items. I don't spend a lot of time here. I have gone months without listing this year. I, we share, um, just because it's easy, the bulk sharing feature. I will tell you, for my vintage closet, yeah, we don't we don't hire anybody. We do it ourselves. It literally takes maybe 60 seconds to share all 170 items in the vintage closet. And yes, so those of you that are not on Poshmark, you have to share. I know it's one of the one of the downfalls, um, but there are a lot of benefits to selling on Poshmark. Ease of use. We again don't have to spend a lot of time in there. Um, large audience. All those things are something that appeal to us. So even without doing a lot of work, except maybe listing a couple items here and there, uh, as well as just sharing twice a day, that's all we do during the week, not even on the weekends, unless I'm feeling you know, sassy, uh, still had a really great month. And uh, we'll, I'll show you, I'll expand this here uh, shortly, just to see how we did with the rest of the year. Then we have Etsy 127.84. I only sold a couple items. One of the things that I found with my Etsy shop is my primary seller was masks. And that was this year and last year, that is, I started Etsy uh, with vintage and masks. And so I, you know, masks kind of are falling to the wayside. People are still wearing them. I hope they're still wearing them. We are still wearing them. But now we are, you know, we actually even purchased some of the KN95 masks to come here this week. And then we'll just use our fabric masks as kind of like a decorative 
overlay. But I have found that those uh, sales have definitely diminished, but this is really only a couple of sales and one of those was a pair of blanket pants that I custom made for a customer. And that's more of what I'm going to be doing here in the new year. No PayPal or other fees. Again, we're focusing primarily just on the Poshmark closet so we didn't have to think about it. Um, one other thing I didn't even mention, we took like half of December, we didn't, I don't even, I don't even remember doing a lot of work in December. To be able to take most of December off and still have a really fantastic month, uh, it goes to show how amazing Poshmark can be. Not a commercial for Poshmark, use whatever platform works for you. I've just found this to be the easiest one for me to use. All right, then we have our transaction fees, shipping costs, and our cost of goods sold. Once you take all of those out, our reselling sales revenue is now twelve twenty one thirty one. So we made our goal excellent, excellent, excellent. So exciting to see those numbers there. Now on the right, this is gonna be for the year. So before we do that, I did promise you that we would compare we're gonna compare all of the months here. So as we see with January through December, uh, February was our highest month for the year of 2021. This was an amazing year, but you can see why. Etsy, this is where I sold uh, so many masks the beginning of the year, everyone wanted masks. And uh, so it was really, it was a busy time for me in my hand making um, business in February, which is why our number was so high here. Then we had, uh, I think that our next highest month, yes, our next highest month was last December, or this December, wait, last December? A few days ago, <laughs> it was December. Uh, so phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal. And uh, the as I was mentioning before, so we purchased Posture VA, and again, um, telling you this because I want to be honest, I'm actually gonna do a video on it because I think that if, especially if you have a lot of things going on, if you're caring for other people or you're trying to run a business and have a full-time job and uh, you know whatever it is in your life, there are tools that can help you. And so Bill and I finally, um, in September, decided to break down and purchase a service so that they share for us, we can relist easily, we can send out offers easily. And we did that in, um, about mid-September because, um, because we had been on vacation mode in August, which is why our numbers you're gonna see here um, were pretty low. June, I shut down my Etsy store, and then in August, we started picking back up. But then in September, um, once we got Posture VA, you'll see that our numbers significantly jumped, again, for the last three months of the year, and that was doing uh, the minimal work. <laughs> like honestly, the minimal work. Um, one other thing, I did not source at all in December, so Bill did not list very much in December. He didn't have anything to list except those minor things that were around the house, and yet we were still able to have the second highest month of the year. Actually, I think the highest month for reselling. So fan freak -tastic. Uh, that is just comparing the rest of the year. But now let's compare as we come over here. And again, this is just reselling. So I wanna focus here and then we'll get into social media. As we look at the totals, so for 2020, we had 14,548.20 was our gross total in the reselling realm or in the, the selling business, the reselling business. So we actually for this year have gone up 35, about $3,500, which is great. So I have all of these, um, uh, comparisons here. We have Flower and Anchor, the Modern Closet, went up by $2,700. I mean, that's a huge jump. That's over $10,000 gross, that almost $11,000 gross that we made even during a time where I have not been leaving the house. I haven't been able to source a lot. We don't have a lot of amazing inventory here. So it's it's been, it's it's phenomenal. I did have a dip, so in the vintage closet year over year for 2020, I did have um, a small little dip there, 300, but I, I am gonna continue to see that because I'm not gonna be focusing on the vintage closet in the upcoming year. I will be purchasing vintage pieces that are amazing, uh, but it's really not gonna be where I spend much time at all. PayPal, that was different. Uh, I, I still sell things on PayPal, or no, sorry, this is Etsy. So on Etsy, uh, I did have an increase of almost $1,300, and that's because I started focusing more on Etsy. And in fact, in the new year, I have a whole plan for this year to focus more on digital content. 
yeah, digital content. Because one of the things that I am really good at, it's something I do for my job, it's something that I do um, for fun, I, I'm, I design things, like I make things, and I'm finding that I'm designing all these things, but I can't print them, even though I want to, I have my Cricut, I just don't have time, or if someone hasn't purchased them, why am I gonna waste that time doing it? So digital items are kind of the cool new thing, it's not new, but it's the thing of the future for me, so I will be focusing on that. So next year, mark my words, we will see a huge increase in Etsy. Okay, so then year over year, our reselling sales revenue for 2021 was 10,794, and for 2020, we didn't even break 10,000. So yay to us, comparatively, year over year for similar years, that is how we did. Now let's dive into our social media revenue. All right, looking at social media revenue, as we focus primarily right now on December, for December on YouTube, we had 102.28. We had on TikTok, 1096, very low month. I didn't put out a lot of content. Um, and these are from the previous month, by the way. So as I'm saying this, um, in November, uh, family was here. I was focusing on many other things. And uh, you can see that as we look historically at TikTok, um, my numbers have continued to dwindle. Also, you know, I haven't been putting a lot, a, I didn't put out a lot of viral content. Well, December, things changed. All of a sudden, I had a number of videos get very, very popular, and I am making um, one to two dollars a day as opposed to like 12 cents a day. So we should see a nice increase as we come into uh, the new year. Also, comparing YouTube as we go back to there. Um, as we look throughout the year, YouTube, I've had kind of a love-hate relationship this year because I've been so busy with other things. I haven't had a lot of time to make videos. So all of you that have stuck around, um, that engage, that like the videos and comment on the videos and find value in what I'm doing, thank you so much because you're the reason I'm doing this. Absolutely. So as we look through, the numbers have been, you know, some months I didn't make anything. Uh, it hasn't been over... Um, it's too exciting, but I still have made $1,168 for the year. So that's nothing to um, shake a stick at, but when I'm thinking about how much I get paid in my day job to do content that is um, similar in nature, I, yeah, YouTube takes a lot of time. Then we have Instagram. This is a new uh, uh, social media revenue source for me. I got, uh, you know, uh, whatever you call this, monetized or op the option to get bonuses on Instagram content, and that started back in November. Uh, when I did the numbers video last month, though, that number was sitting at 222. However, once they process it, I found that it actually went up by quite a bit. So they give you your estimate revenue, but it could go up. I think it could also go down if you've broken any rules, but I don't break any rules. I won't even swear on camera. Uh, so then, so that was 259.76, and then for December, 21084. So, I mean, thinking about comparatively, I have made uh, approximately $470.60 from Instagram in the last two month, months, and I made, what, $35, $33 on TikTok, and it's essentially the same content. So Instagram is really pushing their content creators. And I know a lot of you out there are angry that uh, they're spending so much time focusing on videos and not on pictures, but you know, things change all the time. The technology is just constantly trying to tap in, tap into that market. And then Amazon affiliate for the month, 1482, that is typically every other month um, that that happens. Again, for the new year, I am, uh, I started a blog and I'm starting to add more of my um, products that I use because that's a question I often get asked. Uh, so I've been putting those products over on the blog so that people can find them easily. And I should see an increase in that Amazon affiliate revenue. And just as a reminder, if you click the Amazon affiliate link, um, it doesn't cost you anything at all. They're not going to raise your prices. All it does is let them know that you were sent to Amazon by me, and so then they'll give me a small percentage of anything you purchase. So always wanna make sure that I disclose that. Paid partnerships for December show zero. However, those of you that have been following along know that I just did my Michaels campaign. That went live on January 1st, so I'll actually get paid for that campaign in uh, this month, and so I'll be able to share more about that uh, as, those, uh, as I get paid for that in January. 
And then other, I did get a Vindu payout. So I do, I haven't been doing many partnerships with uh, reselling businesses lately. Again, not where my focus has been, not where my passion has been, but I uh, did have one of you probably uh, uh, tried out Vindu and I did get $5 for that. And that was actually, I think, two different uh, people. So thank you. So then comparatively with social social media revenue, for the year I made 24 28 82 compared to last year's 18 39 69. And since I had planned on focusing more of my energy on social media this year, that's good to see an increase. I didn't set any goals and that's a problem. Um, same thing right now, I haven't set any social media goals. I just wanted to get my content out there, make quality content, create engagement, uh, but I need to sit down and come up with a goal. Maybe, you know, I, Amber Resells just did this. She and I were chatting about, you know, goals for YouTube, how many videos to do, how many followers to get. And I, these are all great things. I just need to do it. So, um, but what I will focus on is there was an increase in, revenue of social media overall. YouTube was down, but I knew that was gonna happen. And hopefully we will continue to see more revenue coming from partnerships as well as Instagram and TikTok. Okay, now let's dive into even further down the rabbit hole. We're gonna look at how much the profit was with taxes and then after taxes. These are all the numbers that we wanna get into um, because these this is what a lot of people don't disclose. So our profit before taxes for the month of December was 1565.21, and that includes social media revenue and reselling revenue. 15.3% is the self-employment tax. You do, you're responsible for paying that because even though, um, specifically for me, I do have a full-time job and I do pay taxes, but I also have a business and so I'm required to pay taxes on that income. Um, we do have a sole proprietorship if you are wondering, if you were curious. Uh, so I have to pay taxes on all of my social media revenue and then we also pay taxes obviously on the business. So then we have our profit after taxes and then business expenses. So this was a really interesting uh, uh, month because the only other month that was lower in business expenses was back in January. Uh, we only had $103.45 and most of those were uh, based on, in fact, I can show you. Again, in the uh, spirit of transparency, so here are the business expenses for December. We have Procreate, we have Cricut Access. These are tools that I use for design and so they are considered a business expense. There is a, I, they go in QuickBooks and there is some sort of tax write-off. I can't tell you what that is, refer to your uh, tax professional. I did have a couple of domain renewals um, for our websites that is part of running the business. I had the QuickBooks, and then I also pay for additional cloud storage so that all of my videos and images have a place to live, and if something happened and my computer died or my phone died, I wouldn't lose everything. So those are all of the business expenses for December. And that brings us to our uh, total profit for December was twelve twenty two twenty eight. So we broke a thousand dollars net overall. Wonderful, great. That money goes to Bill's IRA and it also goes to charity. Uh, that's where we and it goes back into the business. So that's what we spend this revenue on. And then as we look at uh, miscellaneous data, so we sold 58 items in the month of December and our average sale price was thirty three oh. Three. So we've looked at the December numbers. We have looked at December versus the prior year. So we've looked at year over year, but now oh, let's look at these numbers. Okay, these numbers are my selling numbers from 2018 to the current year. Um, these are only reselling. This does not include uh, any social media numbers. This doesn't include um, you know, any of that extra stuff, but it is specific to reselling because I like to see if we're actually in fact doing better in the business, if it still makes sense to have the business, is it still worth our time? Um, always cool to take a trip down memory lane. So in 2018, when I started the business, you can see I started on Poshmark in April 2018. I started uh, just with items that I had around the house or that I already owned. So there were no, I didn't have any, I didn't keep track of any of that. I didn't, um, 
you know, I didn't put that as business revenue. It wasn't business revenue, but I did sell 14 items, so I always put it there because it's a reminder that I did sell something even when I hadn't started my business yet. You can see all the numbers here. Over here on the right-hand side, I wanna point this out. This is the average sale price. In fact, let me break that down again. The average sale price. So in 2018, average sale price was 2018. 2019, it went down, went up in 2020. And look at this, when Bill took over running the <laughs> business, I still, and anyone that has been following along this journey knows the one thing that you, Bill used to always say to me, well, there's many things, but one thing that he used to say and all of you used to say is, you're giving stuff away, you're giving stuff away. And I was, I was giving away stuff because I didn't know the value of my items. I was just getting that dopamine fix of, ooh, buying something and then selling it and buying it and selling it. I was spending a lot of time, by the way, doing that. It was cool at the time, but what's even cooler is seeing where Bill has taken the business. So we are now at an average sale price of $35.16. And for us, I. I can't express how amazing that is because we live in Spokane, Washington. We do not have access to a lot of designer items. Our designer items like Sundance, maybe Patagonia, Columbia, uh, maybe Sorrells if I can find them. I found some St. John which is sold. Um, but other than that, we don't see those huge brands. So for Bill to be able to bring that average sale price up to $35 is phenomenal. And that's not just in the modern closet. No, because he has been helping me with my pricing. Um, so I definitely wanna make sure I give out kudos to him. Uh, it feels uncomfortable for me, but it absolutely has been paying off. Also looking at the number of items sold throughout the year. So my first year on Poshmark, I sold 493 items. And then look at this insane amount that I sold in 2019. So look at my average sale price and then look at how many items I sold. So that tells me I sold like almost 1300 items with such a low sale price that I was killing. And I had a full-time job, by the way. I had a full-time job and I was thrifting like in order to sell that many items, I was thrifting, honestly, every single weekend, probably multiple times a week I was thrifting. We were going to the bins. Um, yeah, this was a really crazy year. And it may look cool because the total income um, was actually really high, but that's only because our business expenses were so low because I didn't have to put a lot of money back in the business. We were just focusing on growth. We were in growth mode. Let's sell, 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 sell. Um, yeah, I'm so glad we, <laughs> I'm so glad we moved, did not have the space to keep all that inventory and refined what our business model was going to look like. Because then you'll see that we had 628 items sold in 2020 and 532. And the reason those dipped, a couple of reasons, as I mentioned, we moved to Spokane. So we were in an apartment, we had a very limited space for inventory. It was the pandemic, so I couldn't go out sourcing at all. So we had to get creative. Um, so that number dropped and that, you know, when we think about those things that happen in business, things are always gonna happen. You have to be prepared, you have to be flexible. And this shows me um, how well we did with being flexible with everything that was going on. Uh, and then you'll see that our revenue, this is this looks more realistic. Um, so we had our total revenue was about 5,000 in 2020 and 5,500 in 2021. And that's again, after everything is taken out of. And we, again, we're right now, we are still taking out a lot of uh, write-offs. So overall, I do wanna point out, this is a really cool number to look at. Um, we have made in the last four years over $66,000 gross. So then our total profit, um, which is interesting to look at after taxes and everything, cost of goods, everything has come out. Um, we've made 37, nine, so close to $38,000 on Poshmark um, and a little bit of Etsy in there, but you saw the Etsy isn't like a huge percentage. So when people say, you know, it, it's a small little side hustle, it is a small side hustle, but it is huge. It can be huge. And it's all about how much money you put into it or not money, but how much you actually put into it. Um, and then last thing to kind of look at over here, the total items sold, we have sold about 3000 items, uh, which is super cool. 
So as we wrap up and think about what's to come in our business and social media, you know, what we have on the horizon, I already mentioned for me specifically, I'm going to be focusing more on design and doing digital content. Um, I, like I mentioned, I started a blog, so I'm keeping track of, uh, I'm, I'm a writer by nature. <laughs> Again, it's something I do during in my day job. Um, so I will be hopefully focusing more on maybe affiliate links and sharing with people the tools that I use and I could probably, and I could get revenue from that. Also my handcrafted goods, I'm still going to be working on uh, creating products and sewing, of course. Um, I've just found that the sewing aspect is something that I do and that I love and that I'm passionate about, but is it something that realistically I want to make money doing? I don't want to get burnt out on it, but I am going to continue to make content around that. And so there I'll be able to hopefully make more revenue with Instagram and TikTok. And I'm going to be putting that content here on YouTube. So that's what's going to be happening on that social media side of things. On the business side of things, we're going to continue doing what we've been doing. Um, again, I didn't source in December. I will be doing some sourcing here in January, but our, uh, let's see in, in our, on our primary closet, I think we have about 570, 580. Um, I'm sure Bill will comment below how many we actually have. Uh, but we want to get that to about 500. We find that 500 items, quality items priced correctly, uh, maybe a little bit of a buffer in there. So we have offers in our back pocket that can work really well for us. So we're going to continue to keep our average sale price. I'd like it to be at 35, at least for the new year on average, we're going to have, you know, dips and, um, you know, hikes there, but I definitely want 35 at least for the year. So that means me sourcing quality items and not junk. No junk. Don't buy filler. We do not need filler. Uh, also uh, streamlining the closet, making sure it is um, regularly updated, regularly relisted. That's something Bill already does, but we're going to continue to do that. And uh, I feel that in the, the upcoming year, we're just gonna continue with where we are. We don't wanna have a huge amount of growth because I wanna focus more um, on other revenue and other avenues. Okay, so if you've sat here the whole time, thank you so much. Hopefully you found this interesting and useful. I'd love for you to subscribe. Yep, easy for me to say. Subscribe and like the video if you found it helpful or useful. Um, also, let me know if there's any other content you want to see. Again, I'm not going to be putting out a lot of YouTube content unless there are requests, just because the uh, time commitment involved. But I appreciate all of you. Happy New Year. Thank you so much. And until next time, see ya!